All right, good day and welcome to uh, today's webinar. We'll wait another minute before uh, we kick off the show just to ensure that everyone um, can, can still join and then we will start our bicep journey. So give us one more minute, thanks. All right, so welcome and uh, let's start today's stream. So welcome to this first episode of our live stream series where we will talk a little bit about uh, BICEP. Now, if you never heard um, about BICEP, if you have no clue what it is, you, you should not worry too much because uh, this today is actually the perfect episode to start your BICEP journey. Um, we will really introduce you to BICEP, what, what it is, and then throughout the series, try to lift your BICEP skills uh, from level zero or something up to level 300 um, so that you will then be ready to use bicep in in your uh, environments uh, yourself so for your information this session will be recorded and will be published um, well as soon as possible after after the stream and uh, just for your in information we had a similar series last year where we uh, covered several uh, arm templates topics. So if you missed um, that series, the link to the recordings will be uh, in the slide deck that um, uh, you will get after the show as well. All right, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to use the Q&A section and uh, we will try to take care of all of your questions. And we'll also have some time um, at the very end to, uh, to discuss uh, your questions specifically. All right, so let's um, quickly introduce ourselves and I'll hand over to Martin first. Thank you, Marcel. So my name is uh, Martin Ernst and I work for a company in Norway called VIPS. Um, we are a payment platform and an, an identity platform. So if you live in Norway or uh, close to Norway, you have probably heard of it. Um, I also, in my spare time, like to race cars and uh, ski uh, big mountains. So that's uh, my quick introduction. Great. Thank you, Martin. And some words about myself. So my name is Marcel. Um, I'm an Azure MVP and Regional Director operating out of Switzerland. I work for Software One. We are a uh, technology services company and we help customers with uh, everything um, on their way or on their journey to the cloud and towards uh, digital transformation. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, BICEP and why it's actually used. So BICEP is somehow used together with the Azure platform. And uh, if you ever worked with Azure, you might have heard of this term uh, ARM or, or Azure Resource Manager. That is actually our, uh, let's say, consistent management layer that takes care of all the modification that happen um, in the in the Azure uh, environment. So that means whenever we do something on the Azure platform, no matter if we are uh, actually using the Azure portal, if we're using um, whatever the, the, the Azure CLI, or if we use PowerShell scripts, or if we talk to some REST APIs or, or whatever, uh, everything goes through ARM and ARM 
uh, as a consistent management layer takes care that we're properly authenticated, that we get the permissions and proper authorization to the services that live on the Azure platform. And it allows us to well deploy new services if you want that, uh, such as virtual machines or such as databases, those kind of things. Um, it allows us to, to get data, uh, to modify data, uh, and so on. So everything goes through ARM. ARM ensures that uh, our experience is consistent. No matter what tools we are using, um, we have always the same permissions. We are uh, actually uh, governed by the same policies, uh, etc. All right, and now what you see here in the slide on the, on the on bottom right, you see a thing called ARM templates. So this is around um, for, for a long time already because Azure Resource Manager templates allow us to somehow uh, follow a declarative approach to describe infrastructure and services, to then deploy uh, those services to the Azure platform. So instead of deploying stuff manually or instead of using an imperative uh, scripted approach, we can use ARM templates uh, and use a declarative approach where we describe the, the actual end state of our infrastructure or application. And then we can hand over this declarative configuration to the Azure Resource Manager, which will then take care of all the rest. So that means Azure Resource Manager will analyze the existing environment and uh, will we'll find out what needs to be changed to make our configuration that we described with ARM templates happen. Right? So it will initially provision the service, uh, uh, or we'll also find out if certain components are already existing in our environment. Um, so that maybe not everything needs to be redeployed, but uh, existing services might need to be changed just a little bit. Right? And I think that's a very important concept to understand. So ARM templates are not only used for initial provisioning, but also then for the full uh, lifecycle of, of an application or a service. Because if we need to make configuration changes on that service, if we need to extend the configuration or add additional services, we can go back to our initial uh, configuration file and just extend or change what should be extended or changed and then hand, hand over the same uh, configuration file again and uh, Azure Resource Manager will recognize that maybe just some minor modifications are needed to an already existing service. So we'll lift our service from, let's say, version one to version two without full reprovisioning. And that also means that this ARM template is then uh, automatically also our, uh, let's say, service description or service documentation. So this is around, has been around for a long time uh, already. Um, and if you ever used to work with ARM templates, you know, um, that well, this this works perfectly, but ARM templates are a little bit complex. Um, they they use a JSON format, um, and that means that we we uh, we end up with lots of commas, uh, parentheses, brackets, and so on. And depending on the complexity of an ARM template, um, it can become kind well kind of complicated to read, right? And uh, I mean JSON. Originally, it was never meant to be human readable, but it's still kind of human readable. Um, and now, how do we deal with this complexity? So until now, we just had to manage it somehow. Uh, but then Microsoft came up with uh, something new, which is um, BICEP now, which is kind of a, a, a new domain specific language or short DSL. And the goal behind BICEP is that we uh, can simplify this coding process so that we can somehow uh, get away from this JSON complexity um, to, to reduce complexity, to make it readable or better readable, and also to remove uh, code, so to, to somehow simplify it, our, our full coding experience, right? Now, what does that mean? Um, that doesn't mean not mean that that ARM now um, can somehow consume BICEP files that uh, will not work. So ARM is still working with uh, uh, ARM templates, but BICEP is kind of an additional um, abstraction layer that allows us to describe our service, and then our BICEP um, configuration file will be compiled into an ARM template, and then it's still the ARM template that is then handed over to the Azure Resource Manager. So ARM templates are still around, JSON is still around, but if you use BICEP properly, you will probably never see ARM templates again. 
if we take a look at the schema, how this looks like, this is what uh, we we had until now. So when we wanted to describe infrastructure as code, we created an ARM template and then somehow handed this over to the Azure Resource Manager and the Azure Resource Manager well, either deployed the appropriate Azure resources or uh, updated existing Azure resources based on our configuration. Uh, and that will still stay the same, as I mentioned, uh, but what happens now is that we get this additional abstraction um, uh, in front of uh, the ARM templates box here, which means that we can now start creating BICEP configuration files, which are far easier to create, understand, read and write. And then we compile um, our BICEP configuration files into ARM templates, and then the rest uh, of the process is exactly the same. Now, to make this this experience very, very simple, um, we can do all of this in one step now. So starting with a specific uh, Azure CLI version um, or PowerShell, no matter um, what you prefer, we can now do this in, in one single step. So that means we can create uh, a BICEP file and then deploy that BICEP file directly uh, to Azure. In the back end, it will still compile to an ARM template and then the ARM template is handed over. But for us, this is a transparent process. We just care about BICEP files. But it also means if you if you are keen to see the results of your uh, BICEP uh, configuration file compilation, you can still have a look at the, the produced ARM template um, and, and, and use that. So what does it mean now from a, um, a tooling perspective? Um, well, to, to start using BICEP, uh, there's two tools or let's say extensions that uh, you might be find very helpful. So the first one is uh, the Visual Studio Code extension that um, allows you to create, uh, write, edit, uh, read BICEP configurations. So if you use Visual Studio Code, this is uh, very much um, um, yeah, suggested to use because it definitely helps you. It gives you this IntelliSense kind of thing. It analyzes the quality of your BICEP file, analyzes the syntax and all of that uh, stuff and gives you this very good authoring experience. And once we have we have created our BICEP file, we then need to compile it into an ARM template and then uh, deploy it to Azure. And um, for that, there's this so-called BICEP CLI. And this is available in two versions. So it's either available in a, in a standalone uh, version or there is also an Azure CLI integrated uh, version. So if you want to use this uh, fully transparent experience that I uh, mentioned before, um, you should use the Azure CLI integrated version because from there you can directly uh, deploy biceps file, uh, bicep files um, to Azure without even uh, recognizing that an ARM template has been created in the back end. All right. Um, so the BICEP CLI does that compilation to an ARM template. And what's also very nice, uh, the BICEP CLI can also decompile ARM templates. So that means you can take an existing ARM template that you might have uh, well, created in the past. And uh, from there, you can now uh, decompile that into a BICEP uh, configuration file. So uh, BICEP CLI actually supports the build or compilation or also uh, the decompilation process. So it goes into both directions and this is very, very helpful if you want to start building your own, uh, let's say, uh, BICEP repository or BICEP library, uh, you can still uh, use the investment you have already done uh, in ARM templates, decompile all of that, and then maybe with uh, some very minor changes, uh, start creating your BICEP repositories. All right. So lots of talking and now we want to see um, BICEP in action, what it actually means. And for that, I will hand over to Martin. Thank you, Marcel. I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Then we can go through whatever we have. So you should see my screen now. And uh, like Marcel talked about is the the reason why we have BICEP now is that Microsoft has uh, acknowledged that the community says this, this ARM template stuff uh, is uh, quite complex. 
Um, we also had a series uh, last year where we talked about uh, all the uh, bells and whistles on ARM templates. So, but since we now can, uh, since now uh, Bicep is in parity with, uh, with ARM templates, we can now focus on learning uh, Bicep instead of uh, ARM, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure if you can exclude your um, uh, ARM template knowledge uh, just yet, but uh, hopefully it's pretty soon. So the first thing I have done is that um, in VS Code, which is my uh, preferred uh, tool to work with the bicep files, I have this extension called uh, bicep. So this is a, a extension uh, which uh, you add into uh, bicep, which will then uh, then uh, go to through your files and see that okay, this is a bicep file, and then I can uh, use all the functionality which is inside this uh, extension. So, for example. Uh, autocomplete uh, and um, those kinds of stuff. So I have installed uh, Bicep as well, and then I believe the, so let's see, is it Bicep version work? Uh, So I have uh, Bicep CLI uh, 0 0.4, which is, uh, I believe it's just the latest one. Uh, I haven't seen any announcement on uh, uh, 0.5 being announced yet. So that means I'm in parity with uh, ARM and I am actually ready to use Bicep for production environments. What, last year when we talked about briefly about Bicep in our uh, ARM template series or infrastructure as code on Azure series, uh, Bicep was in uh, point one and was a, a really uh, at a beta or alpha stage at that point. But now we are good to go. So the apart from installing the extension and installing the Azure CLI, then we can or when we have that installed, we can start to explore uh the all the things that we have with bicep um so the the first thing that we notice is the the um it looks a little bit different than we had with arm so let's just take a look at one arm template to see how that looked back in the days so this is raw kind of json and then we have all these brackets and the stuff that we with without having complex templates uh, um, uh, last year for example before bicep then we we needed to to care about these brackets and so on but with bicep that's uh, that's almost gone so now we have we have to write less uh, lines of code to do the same um, this is one example that I have, which is uh, the the minimal uh, minimum you need to write to have a storage account created. So it just takes the the name and uh, location and all the properties that is needed for for uh, for Bicep. Bicep works a little bit different. So now that I have this uh, this um, extension installed with um, with, uh, with VS Code, I can start typing in uh, resource, for example, and then it will uh, try to autocomplete uh, the things that I'm looking for. So RES, of course, is a resource. And in Bicep, I need to define that I need a resource and then I need to uh, put in, let's say, a, let's call it a friendly name. So this is only uh, used within Bicep. Uh, we are going to look at that uh, a little bit later in the series where we can reference stuff within 
within modules and within the same template and, and so on, but you need to have a friendly name for the resource. And then we are, um, let's use the autocomplete function again. So a resource with child, uh, resource with defaults, then it will uh, set the, 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 the defaults that we always need for deploying resources. So if I, let's say I want to uh, deploy a uh, NSP, I can just call it for this uh, demo, I can just say there's a friendly name NSG, and then it will also auto complete the, res uh, the resource provider type that we have. So net there's probably under network, right? Network. Uh, network security groups. So it will auto complete wherever it, it finds finds necessary. So we'll to a security group, and then it will prompt us for what API version I want to use. I'll choose the latest. And then the name is something, and then it's a string. And the location is West Europe. Or way east in this case. So with, with it knows that I want to deploy a network security group, then it also knows that I want to add in security rules. And then we can continue to build upon that uh, functionality with auto completion that this uh, extension has. So it's pretty easy to get started now in uh, a part where it was not that easy in the uh, ARM template um, uh, area. Just take a quick look at my notes. So that's how we basically get started with Bicep in the first place. Um, like Marcel said, it it's it builds like an abstraction layer of ARM, and we can always take a look at how these two small demos will will work. So let's take a look at the demo two here. So just to make it a little bit more uh, complex, uh, so to speak, we will go through all these complexity that you can add to Bicep later. But in this example, I have added in a parameter and I will use this parameter uh, for the storage account name. And I will also uh, add in a, a storage container. So what you see here is that I'm actually referencing the friendly name and the name and saying that this container belongs to uh, the storage account that we are deploying. So it's an implicit dependency. And I'm going to show you how much more code that that small part is in, in ARM template compared to compared to Bicep. So you don't have to do this, uh, but if you want to, you can take a look at it. But uh, like Marcel said, this will deploy as a bicep file uh, directly to Azure. But let's see if we right click on the file, we can then go to build. And then it will create the JSON uh, equivalent of our bicep file, which is an ARM template. And then you can see, apart from this metadata, this is what you will need to, to write. So it's a li little bit more complex. You have to set the dependency. Uh, this is an explicit dependency. So in where in Bicep, it will it will just a reference to the name. But uh, in ARM templates, it was a more complex scenario to reference where the container 
container will uh, be deployed or to what storage account the, the container will be deployed to. And also the parameter section is a little bit more uh, not complex, but it's a little bit more um, a little bit more to type. This was 38 lines and uh, my demo was uh, 20 uh, or less than that because there are actually white spaces in between here. Let's just delete that before I commit. Um, so that's what we can compile uh, to ARM, but we can, like Marcel said, we can also decompile an existing uh, ARM template. So if we, let's say we um, try to use one of the files that we had last year, Marcel, I'm not sure how they will work. <laughs> But let's try. So, AC bicep decompile. So that will means that we will decompile the ARM template to a bison uh, bicep file. So if we take one of the more complex uh, stuff that we used uh, last year, let's see, it was templates. Then it should, of course, it will say something about an error, but I'm not sure. Uh, this is somewhat an uh, experimental feature, but I've seen it work for less complex uh, ARM templates. But once we are linked, there's probably some links that are not relevant uh, or uh, does not work anymore in this uh, template file. So it sees it has uh, some errors specific to the file path. OK, but if we look at the file that we use, so Azure deploy.json, it was uh, around 100 lines of code. And the bicep file are, is 48. And that's that's with all the link deployments that we had in this in this uh, quite complex linked ARM template with a lot of information that we need to and uh, references and so on. So 50% uh, reduced or uh, something like that. But just to prove that it works, I can try to deploy this uh, bicep file. Of course, I will need a resource group that I don't remember the name of. So now in the it reads my of course it reads my template and it asks for a storage account name which I will just uh, put in uh, something that I hope no one else uses and then I will hit enter and in the back in the back end now it will translate this uh, into an ARM template and send it out to Azure Resource Manager. We can probably take a look at deployments here and it will see that uh, earlier or yesterday my deployment failed, but today I have demo two deploying. And this is a storage account. That, that works. So if I want to change something in the storage account, I can do that in this uh, template and then redeploy. Uh, so that's my 
first demos of this, or at least these are the demos, unless somebody has some questions that they would like to answer, then we can probably show something. But uh, if you wait a couple of weeks, we will cover everything from A to Z about uh, bicep, I believe. Marcel? To bicep and to relevant tooling, and I think what, what, what well what we learned is that uh, bicep definitely helps to remove complexity to enhance all the readability of our configuration script, and at the very end um, it makes us faster uh, and it also enhances uh, well obviously the quality of our deployments. All right, so let me share my screen again. Go back to the slides. You should see that now, I assume. All right. Good. Um, yeah, as we've seen, uh, Bicep is very easy to learn, so you can really start your Bicep journey today. Download the relevant uh, uh, tools or extensions so that you can start using it. Um, just some 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 additional uh, inputs. Uh, if you use Bicep CLI, ensure that you have are running version 0 0.4 or someday uh, higher versions, of course, because this um, uh, gives us parity with ARM templates and is also uh, uh, supported by Microsoft uh, for production deployments. I think that's that's very important uh, to keep in mind. Um, we specifically try to keep these uh, uh, these webinar episodes short, so 30 minutes, so that we have some more uh, time at the end for for Q&A. Uh, until then, two more things while you are preparing your questions. Uh, if you're interested in the webinar recordings from uh, last year, so if you also want to dig into uh, ARM templates a little bit more, go to this uh, URL. Um, it will. Uh, forward you to a playlist that contains, I'm not even sure, five or six recordings um, about ARM templates or uh, infrastructure as code in general. Um, also uh, very interesting. And finally, we received this last minute. There's obviously uh, that new cloud challenge that you can uh, uh, participate uh, in. Um, you can earn a batch and finally you can also uh, win like uh, cool, nice gadgets. Um, some swag, uh, whatever it is, I don't know, stickers, bags, you can see it here. Um, definitely make sure that you also uh, take this challenge. Um, it will not take you too, too long, but you qualify for a batch and for, for some swag. All right, and then finally, um, just as an information for our next streams, so this was the first one today, um, the introduction to Bicep, and Martin said uh, that uh, in the next, streams will also focus uh, like on, on more specific uh, features. So uh, September 8th will focus on everything, parameters, variables, functions, those kind of things so that uh, you can can learn a little bit um, how this works in Bicep. September 22nd, we'll talk about uh, more complex deployments, advanced structures, and we'll also show you um, how Bicep modules can be used to uh, even more simplify your deployments. And then uh, in October or on October 6, uh, we will talk about uh, bringing bicep configuration files into structured release pipelines. So this is what you can expect uh, to come in the next in the next week from us. And that said, um, yeah, we still have some more minutes for for questions. So if you have something, feel free to use uh, the Q&A window. Um, if you don't have anything uh, to ask, uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you for, for attending um, and hopefully you'll be back uh, in two weeks for the next episode. Thank you very much. Yeah, Marcel, if there isn't any questions, maybe we can just talk a little bit about, about Bicep, if you want. We can, we can, go ahead. So um, just let's uh, do the video thing, shall we? Yeah, sure. So how you, do you run Bicep in production now? 
Well, we have we have several um, customers that are now starting their bicep journey uh, because it wasn't production ready yet. Um, they were, of course, like testing uh, or, or use bicep in POCs, but uh, we are now actually slowly transitioning all our customers uh, to to really use uh, bicep um, also in their production environment. But it takes some time. I mean, all the investments, uh, all let's say the, the the deployment strategies, they they need to be. Uh, well, it, it needs some rethinking before you can really just then switch to bicep. What we definitely do is that uh, we definitely uh, suggest to use bicep for every new DevOps or infra S code customer. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What about yourself? Well, uh, I kind of come from um, service provider background uh, where we managed all customers, but now I'm in sort of not internal IT, but I I'm in a platform based uh, company where we build all our tools ourselves or the platform ourselves and we are actually moving from uh, somewhat self-developed tools and also a little bit that we experimented a little bit with uh, Prudumi uh, earlier and we are trying to transition uh, everything that my team does into into bicep now just to to see if it works and for now we have around 100 modules and a couple of thousand of, or multiple thousand of lines of code and it uh, it seems to work pretty good. Um, huh. Once once it was in uh, 0.4, it was uh, it was way better than than earlier. All right, so you had a very good experience. What what about your team? So when they started using Bicep, was it like no big deal for them to, to actually learn it? Well, it, my team makes it still pretty uh, cold, uh, cold, knowledgeable uh, individuals. Well, um, it, it's uh, and some of them have been using a uh, Terraform earlier, and some of them are using C Sharp from day to day. So then it was easy for them. But uh, um, <laughs> in comparison with with JSON ARM templates, it's uh, a lot easier to get started. That's for sure. Hopefully, it's not becoming too easy, so that they still have a little bit of a challenge <laughs> when, they, when they are coding services. Yeah, we will cover this later, but uh, it get uh, the bicep files get complex uh, as well uh, when we are talking about uh, modules, looping, references, everything like that. So then it will be complex. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, yeah, we're really much forward, uh, looking forward to to also cover these topics in the next um, in the next episodes. I do not see any questions, so um, nope. we could wrap this up. I think so. Yeah, so let's wrap this up. Um, well, I also said the, already said the thank you and goodbye words, so I will leave it to you now. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. Um, thanks to everyone who participated and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.